So after the incredible positive response I received from my last video comparing Archicad 23 against Revit, I thought it was time to take an in-depth look into Archicad 24 and the new heavyweight in the game. What's going on guys? My name is David Tomic and welcome back to the channel. Archicad 24 was just announced in Australia and it has some incredible features that I want to talk to you about today. If you didn't see my last video comparing Archicad to Revit and that's something you're interested in, make sure you go back and check that out first because today we're going to be talking about Archicad as a standalone powerhouse platform. So if you're already an Archicad 23 user and looking to upgrade, wondering what's different and want to know straight away, well, the answer is pretty simple. Graphisoft is really focusing on the BIM integration for Archicad 24. They're putting a lot of their key focus and key ideas into structural modeling, structural analysis, and MEP design. If you don't know what MEP design stands for, it stands for mechanical, electrical, and plumbing. So one of the main upgrades to Archicad 24 is the integration and upgrade of the BIM cloud. Many of us have used the BIM cloud or a variation of the BIM cloud in the past, which allows us to basically connect to our team members outside of the office, at home potentially or overseas. With COVID-19 being such a huge issue in the global economy as it stands today in 2020, introducing the BIM cloud and upgrading its features seems like a very smart decision on Graphisoft's behalf. If you're a regular to the channel, welcome to the first ever scene change. I think that truly deserves a like and subscribe if the video so far hasn't convinced you. So in this corner of the house, we're gonna be talking a little bit more about the BIM cloud and what the BIM cloud can do as a standalone service online. So Archicad is focused predominantly on the fact that the BIM cloud can now be accessed by anybody from anywhere in the world. This means if you have access to the internet and a HTTPS secured connection, then you can access the BIM cloud and access all the data that you previously had to have locally on a OneDrive or any other external server. So what is the BIM cloud? The BIM cloud is now a standalone feature that allows everybody to collaborate in the one space. So if you have a team of structural engineers, civil engineers, and maybe some mechanical guys, a construction team, and the client themselves, you can integrate this all into the BIM cloud and then allow separate sections for uploading different styles of documentation, constantly being informed about what is being managed, what is being transitioned, and all the new information being presented on the software. Another key element here is the simple fact of having the ability to either roll back or check previous documentation. So if you, as the architect, or you as a structural engineer have gone and uploaded a set of drawings to the BIM cloud, but realized that you've made potentially a fatal error on the latest revision, you can double check how far back that error goes and make sure that everybody in the team is informed of this information ASAP. Now, obviously this is a dramatic example and it could be something as simple as just wanting to go back and check something on a previous example that somebody's potentially pointed out that you may have missed or added in the next set of drawings. But it is a good feature that we're all now accustomed to on features like OneDrive and Google Drive with the ability of rollbacks. So starting with some simple changes in the BIM cloud. First of all, it is again focused on the structural and the MEP integration, really trying to combine all the engineers and all the architects together. As I'm sure many of us are aware, this is a huge challenge when designing and working on a very large scale project. However, with the BIM Cloud, Model Compare is a new feature that allows you to simply understand and track changes that have been made by people other than yourself or yourself included. So a basic quick summary is allowing you to track changes. If somebody in Team B overseas or at home goes and makes a few changes, uploads it to the cloud and sends their project data across, you can quickly and automatically view the differences between that model and your model. Now, this is a very handy feature if you have new staff members or are struggling to communicate large amounts of information across the board. It gives you a graphical representation of what's changed, what's remained, and what elements you need to focus on and worry about. So if some beam sizes or some column sizes have gotten significantly bigger, you can quickly and easily implement this into your updated model. Now, an added benefit is that you can produce notes in these changes. So if somebody sends you a change that you don't like or isn't perfect, 
You can quickly select those elements that you want them to adjust and change, take a screenshot, include it in the issues notes section, and then type a quick little note to that person saying, column too short, column too small, increase balustrade height, or whatever the issue might be. This is a really, really handy feature. If you're doing a project that has thousands and thousands of changes or is rather complex, trying to manage a team on a BIM project can be a huge headache. So being able to create an issues list, which becomes more or less a to-do list later down the project is very handy and a good reminder for anything that you may have missed by just shouting at people and telling them to change this, change that. One thing that is a catch here with the BIM Cloud service is it is a paid subscription. With COVID-19 happening now in 2020, it is a little bit cheaper to access BIM Cloud and to subscribe to a one-year membership than it is regularly, but I know that feature expires on the 31st of August here in Australia. Now, data and privacy go hand in hand in 2020. We know companies like Facebook have previously gone under the hammer for breaches of data and privacy. So being able to control your data in a secure manner is very important on the BIM Cloud. It gives you the full access to truly manage individual teams and grant access based on their requirements. If you've been using ArcCAD for a while now, you've probably well aware of the fact that their furniture and objects are pretty poor. Most of us have to download external libraries or constantly add to our libraries in some way, shape or form. You'll be happy to know that ArcCAD 24 is releasing 40, I know a huge number, but 40 brand new residential objects. This varies anywhere from beds, sofas, wardrobes and lamps and accessories. So if you've been looking for something a bit more modern in your 3D renders, this could be a good upgrade for those brand new objects. So an experimental feature that has been added into ArchiCAD 24 that is also being promoted as a very large feature in itself is the addition of Python scripts. If you don't know what Python scripts are, basically it allows you to do parametric design inside ArchiCAD and lets you integrate your software with Rhino and Grasshopper. Another new feature has come to Mac only. So if you're an Apple user, this one's for you. ArchiCAD 24 has now introduced a dark mode into ArchiCAD 24. So like the new iOS update that allows you to put your whole screen into dark mode and save your eyes from those blinding white lights all day long, you can now finally transition ArchiCAD into dark mode. Now, if you ask me, this is really going back to the days of AutoCAD and the 2D line drawings on that black screen. I don't know how much I'm gonna like it. I love dark mode. Everything of mine is in dark mode. So it's definitely gonna be an interesting feature that I can't wait to try out. All right, so this is scene change number two in this video, which means I'm truly making a real active effort to make sure to produce some high quality content for you guys. I've never recorded down here in the stairwell, so the acoustics might be absolutely terrible and I may never record here again. But the simple active effort, I believe, requires a like and subscribe. Further to my point that ArchiCAD 24 is really trying to become an integrated platform between structural engineers and architects, the integrated platform is now becoming more and more user-friendly for engineers to jump on board and start documenting inside ArchiCAD. So like you can on Revit, now ArchiCAD truly provides an inbuilt structural analysis software where you can understand your loads, your load bearing capacity, and the connection point between columns, beams, slabs, and roofs. If this is something that a structural engineer in your team knows about, I would truly recommend that this is a structural engineer's domain and that architects, draftspeople, designers don't take on this mission of a software update. There are so many features that we aren't really familiar with as architects and designers. So it's an important fact that these structural engineers become part of your team, get on board with ArchiCAD and start using the absolute maximum capabilities that are now available in ArchiCAD 24. For example, one of these upgrades is a bi-directional ArchiCAD model export. You can take your ArchiCAD BIM model, export the structural information into what they call a SAM model or a structural analytical model that allows engineers to import this data directly into their engineering software. So for example, there's a SAF file that exports all your data or your structural data as an Excel document and pumps it out to the engineers. These guys can now 
import this Excel data and don't ask me how Excel can transform into a full 3D model in their structural analysis programs. Once they're finished making modifications to the structural elements of the design, they can send you a modified Excel or SAF file back and then you can directly import that into ARCHICAD 24 again, automatically updating it to a 3D elements and components and see the changes that have been made. So going back to my previous comments on tracking changes and understanding changes of different team members, the BIM Cloud now allows you to integrate these engineers directly with your model. Now, this is an extremely complicated procedure and I would recommend it only on very complex projects. If you're doing something as simple as a warehouse or a shed and it has no real architectural or structural significance to it, then it's probably easier to continue doing it the way you're doing it now. However, if you're doing a very large scale project with hundreds of thousands of different structural members that you have to cross check every single time there's an update, well then this is definitely something worth investigating and trying out. It is going to be something that your senior designer or your senior architect takes on board as a challenge because understanding BIM and BIM modeling in a whole sense is a full-time job. It is something that somebody has to monitor, review and check continuously to make sure no mistakes or no key flaws have been brought up between the consultants understanding this one model and working as one team. Now, ARCHICAD 24 hasn't forgotten about the mechanical guys. The HVAC plugin is completely integrated into ARCHICAD 24 this time around. So unlike Revit, you don't have to go and purchase another plugin. You can have all this information ready at your fingertips. This might mean that some engineers might be a bit more convinced to move over to the ARCHICAD platform versus the Revit platform, now knowing the fact that A, ARCHICAD is cheaper than Revit, and B, the MEP plugin is directly inbuilt into the software. So now using an engineer that's already in ARCHICAD, doing all their plumbing, mechanical, and electrical in ARCHICAD is gonna make this significantly quicker and significantly easier for you and us to understand the model and the whole project as a whole. The BIMX app has also had a significant update to really let your clients explore their model and explore their project. I think personally for me, the one key standout feature is the increased performance of photorealistic rendering, which now includes real-time light rendering. This is meant to be done on any device across any platform, be it an iPad, an iPhone, or your web browser entirely in its own standalone platform. It should be able to handle this real-time light tracing, which is definitely a huge leap forward for an app of this caliber. Anyway, that's all from me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. To summarize ARCHICAD 24, I believe it is really focused on BIM and the integration of your structural and civil engineers together with the architects. I think if you're going to be using the BIM Cloud system, you're gonna want a senior designer or a senior architect on this project full time to really try and manage the BIM model itself. That is gonna be a full time job in itself. So make sure you take a look at this software, look at it in depth before jumping onto it on a very large project and making many mistakes. But in general, I think it is moving towards more of a powerhouse platform that can compete with Revit now on its own basis. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button 2020 style. And as always, I'll see you next Monday.